and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of the Future Hour. Today's guest is Jason Lee. Jason is a CEO for Algorand Foundation. He held various positions in the NAM Foundation in the past, such as Vice President and Executive Committee, Board Secretary, Partnerships and Strategic Alliances, and Expansion Director since 2017. Based in Melbourne, Australia, currently he is also a board director for Blockchain Australia and advisory board member to the Blockchain Philanthropy Foundation. Recognized as a Forbes 30 and 30 Asia list maker, he was a fintech startup co-founder, ecosystem builder, and wealth management executive with Standard Chartered Bank, having worked with partners across 30 cities throughout his careers. And his impact, I believe, is just beginning. And the Algorand Foundation is a not-for-profit organization that has a vision of a borderless, frictionless economy built on public decentralized blockchain technology. And the four S of Algorand is unique, pure POS algorithms such as scale, speed, security, and sustainability. Those are the things that they are very much so focused on, and they guarantee a platform that will underpin application development decades into the future. Today, me and Jason talk about his definition of success, the importance of mindfulness, and recap on the lessons he have learned on the journey, and also many more interesting things such as the focus on innovation and education when it comes to Algorand Foundation. And most importantly, we also talk about what are some of his favorite drinks and some of our favorite quotes and books. With that said, please enjoy. The future hour is now. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. Today, I'm super happy and thrilled to have my. Dear friend Jason, to be on the podcast, Mr. Jason Lee, and、uh, let's jump right into it. Would you mind tell us, after all the things you have accomplished, all the great work you have done, how do you define success? Hi, hi, Jason. Good to hear from you. It's been、uh, quite a long time, I think, since we met in、uh, 2018 at a blockchain beach event to reconnecting、yeah. again,、um, and and yeah, a lot has has happened. Um, I guess I'll start by answering your question.、Um, how do I、yes. define success? I feel that success、uh, can be defined in achieving what you want in life in in a very intentional way.、Um, success is is hardly ever accidental. So having a strong、mm. uh, intention and clarity in what you're doing,、uh, I feel it's a very good definition of success. I I can relate this to my journey.、Um, I I started off、um, as as a law undergraduate. Then I did I went into banking. Uh, with an international bank, and then I sort of thought that I'd be a career banker and just you know st- stuck to that path. And for me, as as I was thinking, is that what I want to do in life? And I started having more intention into my、uh, future itself, and that was when I thought that I want to be in the forefront of innovation. And then I became very intentional in being involved in fintech because that was really big in banking and financial technology, and that led to.、Um, Me getting involved in、uh, co-founding a fintech startup, actually leaving my banking job and and doing that, and then、uh, within that itself,、um, getting into the blockchain and cryptocurrency world because within fintech,、um, the leading edge was actually in blockchain and crypto. And the reason I did that was I made a, a life move、uh, where I grew up in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, over to Melbourne, Australia. So the startup, the fintech startup, is still running in Malaysia,、uh, but when I moved to to Melbourne, Australia, I really wanted. To be intentional, what I want to achieve、uh, again, back to the definition of success, and that led to my role with the NAM Foundation, or the NAM Blockchain, and and the foundation sort of oversees the the, the blockchain protocol development, and then now recently with the Algorand Foundation、um, as their COO on January this year, twenty twenty one. So I think all this came about、uh, through a life of intention. Obviously, there are some bumps and hard knocks along the way,、uh, but. Again, success is hardly ever accidental, and it needs to be having clarity and intention in the life that you want. Absolutely, I totally agree. Right, you're saying that essentially that success is usually not the way we imagined 
it would be, or even when it comes, it comes in a little bit different kind of form and different than exactly what we imagine, right? And you mentioned that clarity is very important, right? So, is there any advice you could give for the younger generation about how to gain clarity? Very good question. The way to gain clarity, there there are multiple ways. Ah,、uh, one is to find clarity within yourself. So you ask yourself, like, what do I want in life? And and that often comes from reflection, silence, solitude, taking、mm-hmm. time to just think about what you want in life. And out of that, you can find ah、uh, the clarity. In fact, I'm actually going to take a day off in the next few days just to spend time ah、uh, being in silence and solitude and to just to think about life a bit. And and that's a practice that I want to cultivate regularly. Ah,、uh, second way is is besides the internal is external. You develop clarity by just talking to different people in life. So I like like what you're doing right now in talking to different people through the podcast. And for a young person, I would recommend just connecting and learning about different people and the jobs and the industries that they're in to the entrepreneurs. And as you learn about more ah、uh, different areas that you could see yourself in, you develop a clarity of what you want and what you don't want in life. So clarity can come from within, or clarity can come from internally or externally. How you interact with people, or the books that you read, or the podcasts that you listen to. Like I hope some of them are listening to your podcast right now, ah,、uh, and、Amazing. to just figure things out as they go through both sort of tracks. Yes, absolutely. And for me, one of the reason or the path I have gained clarity is that I have done many things that I thought it would be very cool, but at the end of the day, I did it for a month or a few months or a few weeks. I realized it wasn't that cool at all. I realized I didn't really want it. Right. So for me, one of the way to gain clarity is that tried many things, and、mm. really, when I know that. This is not what I wanted, and drop it right away, and do something else, and that is something I realized quite helpful. So, on、yeah. that note, about thinking, being solitude, do you practice meditation or、uh, yoga or things along that line or some kind of、uh, ritual? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I do practice uh, mindfulness uh, meditation. I try a lot to.、Uh, Be in contemplation of what I'm doing, and a lot of this comes from just the practice of of different things. So,、uh, right. just to draw back the question that you said, right? I always like to tell young people this, right? When you start off, try to do one one thousand things one time, and then if you find the things you like, you do a hundred things ten times, and then find do ten things a hundred times, and you can finally find that one thing that you can do a thousand times. Right? You're、mm. going to be unstoppable.、Mm. And I think it was Bruce Lee that said this, right? I don't fear men. Who can do a kick a thousand different ways? But I feel a man who can do who has practiced one kick one thousand different one thousand same times, right? And I think that's what、yes. I've learned、uh, in the area of of practicing. Like it is in mindfulness, in meditation, and silence that you can also start to be more clear and intentional about how you define success. Right, absolutely. And speaking from personal experience, literally this week I started again、um, online meditation. A daily online meditation. So doing this with、uh, the East Coast of、uh, America and Canada. So it will be two to three p.m. here in Madrid for one hour. And something that's very interesting is that literally all you do is just sit there and being still and breathe, right? But every day, when you are sitting there, you have different thoughts and. You will be confronting different kind of energies, and it's it's something super super simple. It's like just be there and sit still. And let go, but every day is like a new challenge. Every day is a new challenge. So、mm. I truly see the importance of practice, right? And draw back into a little bit what you just said: that practice one kick or one move a thousand times. And something you mentioned before during the interview, you said, "I look forward to further championing the growth of blockchain ecosystem in Australia, Asia, and the rest of the world." Right. So in the blockchain space, what is that? One kick or one thing that you've been practicing a thousand times. Yeah, great, great question. And I, I think that one kick that I sort of realized is that I'm a good、uh, person who likes to champion or advocate things. <coughs> so advocacy、mm. is is part of my、um, core intention and and skill set, I would say, and and that's evidenced 
that when I was uh, younger, people always used to call me the people guider. I would always host the parties and people would come along. Mm. And when I was in banking, I, I mentioned earlier on, uh, part of me uh, being part of the founding team of, of a fintech startup firm was us also uh, founding the Fintech Association of Malaysia back in 2015, 2016. Uh. And back then, fintech was still really new and we wanted to create an industry body that would bring all the fintech players together the banks, That's the startups, nice. the regulators. Um, and that led to that FinTech Association of Malaysia. I championed uh, FinTech at that point of time. And when I moved to Australia, um, it was all about blockchain. And what I did was actually uh, went in and be part of Blockchain Australia, the industry body. And over the last two to three years, championed uh, the growth of blockchain adoption in Australia itself. And, and today, um, I sit as, as a board member, as the board secretary for Blockchain Australia and support that growth. And, and now Blockchain Australia is recognized as really the peak industry body. We've got a full-time CEO. We've got regulators, parliamentarians, uh, large companies, exchanges, all part of our membership because they believe in what Blockchain Australia uh, can do in representing the industry altogether. That's wonderful. And uh want to acknowledge you of your journey and this, you're always the... um how do you say Ad- advoc- advocator? The advocate, you know, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. advocate, yeah. advocate for for you know mm. f- for the mission, right? Because yeah. someone it's like it's like you know the, with the blockchain space too, right? Someone needs to be literally their hands on deck like, to build a protocol, you know, and mm. you know write a white paper. But someone also needs to be there to be the storyteller to mm. spread the mission, spread the vision, right? So um, maybe it's just to go in quickly with that. How do you usually? Uh, championing these endeavors how i guess through, through different means i think uh, the last time i met you was in la at, at the blockchain yes. event i was i was talking about yes. uh, the, the potential power power potential of blockchain protocols and uh, the other way is, is just through excellence in my role so currently in my, in my role with the algorand foundation uh, we support in the running of programs uh, and accelerator programs activities hackathons and also the management as a steward of the algo tokens so uh, the bit of history when when the algo rent network was developed uh, there were 10 billion tokens that were minted um, many of them were distributed and a portion of them was kept in sort of like our endowment and and so the foundation is a steward to that endowment and then we have an allocation that's being uh, allocated and the community in the future would go through this process called community governance and they get to vote and decide on where the allocation goes and then we facilitate that so as a foundation uh, that's what we do and so i see advocacy as just doing well in my job and also where mm-hmm. possible connect with different people like yourself speaking on this podcast to advocate the power and potential of blockchain technology i think we're just at the tip of the iceberg um, this is as uh, the potential of this is as good as the creation of uh, the store of value in cash or in in a dollar bill or in items you know centuries ago because what you're really doing is you're storing uh, a form of energy and a form of value yes. in, in, in a tangible asset through cash. But now it is through the storing of value in a digital asset, which you know we're yes. now in this big digital boom from the internet to now an application of it. So, so I feel that blockchain and digital asset and cryptocurrencies would really uh, support us in a lot of areas of financial inclusion, growth, and really connecting the world together through the use of digital assets. Mm. some two quotes that relate what you said absolutely blew my mind lately um michael Saylor on this podcast he mentioned something he this funny interesting definition about things right he mentioned mm. innovation are and should be essentially indistinguishable from magic and he also said that money is the highest form of energy that human could use mm. right and exactly what you just mentioned right is mm. we used to at the beginning store value or energy in gold and it takes mm. so much time <laughs> so much cost to ship and literally use gold right and then yeah. we have the central bank and then we have the paper bill yeah. and now yeah. everything is in the digital and the mm. value could be transmitted in 10 times to 100 times faster speed with one of the 10th or one of the 1,000 friction of the cost, 
right? And mm. that is definitely the amazing thing about innovation. And um, the foundation is something super, super simple about what we do, right? So although you already touched base on this, but we'd like to get an even better soundbite here, right? Which is, could you please explain as if I were 10 years old, Algorand and Algorand Foundation's purpose and its differences? Yeah, great. So I, I guess Michael Saylor quoted from uh, Arthur C. Clarke when he said, uh, uh, he's a writer back in the 1960s, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, right? Yes. And and I think Algorand wants to do that as well. And I think I, I learned from, I think it was Michael Saylor as well, about how the whole concept of uh, money is energy altogether. And, and with the digital assets, you're actually putting this energy into digital assets and, and the power potential is, of that is there. Uh, now, back to your question on, uh, if you if you were ten years old, how would you say is, is Algorand and Algorand Foundation's purpose, right? Yes. So so I guess uh, first of all, this, uh, to those who are, are listening and and are still a bit unfamiliar with Algorand itself, we have uh, two entities. One is known as Algorand Incorporated, or just known as Algorand, and one's Algorand Foundation. So when I if I would say to ten year old, I would say that Algorand builds the Lego blocks so that others can assemble them. And Elgrand Foundation attracts designers and entrepreneurs to use these blocks to build, you know, elaborate different kind of um, different type of Lego types to make all the kids happy. So I actually got this from a friend Amy when I asked her that question as well. Uh, but the the idea is that um, Elgrand Incorporated actually builds on the protocol layer itself, and then the Elgrand Foundation looks into ecosystem development. And so we then um, say that, hey, with this building blocks, the Lego blocks, you can build all kinds of different things uh, that are good use cases, that are good applications for the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. And Jason, earlier you just mentioned that the Algorand Foundation is really focusing on building the community and making the meaningful impact, right? So there's mm -hmm. a question. The Nod advisor, Dr. Cole Pierre George, his FinTech Innovation Hub received a very generous grant from the Algorand Foundation to establish on uh, to establish an Algorand FinTech Innovation Hub at University of Cape Town. And what are some of the key criteria for a project to receive grants from the Algorand Foundation? Yeah, that's right. So the University of Cape Town in uh, South Africa, we're really glad to partner with them. Uh, to look yes. into uh, really, uh, we provided the grant for you know, Dr. Kopi George and the team there. So we do have a grant program known as the 250 million ELGO grants program. And that grants program uh, supports the funding of projects and proposals that uh, advance the ELGO grant ecosystem. So we do have a few criteria. We have uh, like a bit of a grant scorecard. So questions like, um, does this project fit with Algorand's long-term strategic priorities? Or does it either bring new users to the Algorand network or bridge use cases for Algorand? Or can the project uh, be sustained or scaled after the grant ends as well? It needs to be sustainable in, in the projects that you're funding. Or does it uh, make a substantive enough contribution that it actually warrants funding itself? Or can it be self-funded altogether? So... We have all these criteria that we use and an and internal evaluation team that looks into it. Uh, but on a high level, we've got about over 100 grants funded already. And uh, recently, in the last couple of months, we've got about 100 grants applications in the pipeline. So the, the program is quite robust. And yeah, we're quite excited. Uh, like this innovation hub with UCT and also with um, onboarding more grants projects uh, into the Algorand ecosystem. Right. Because um, it's... You know, I just have to ask about this, right? Because it was a huge news back in June, uh, the $2 million Algorand Trailblazer Bounty Program. So, yes. um, and exactly with what you said, right? What was the latest, most exciting news that specifically about the program that you uh, can share with us? Yeah, that's right. So we launched the program about um, two months ago. And it's a new program. It's, it's specifically focused on developers. It's, and and uh, we're quite excited to actually see the program uh, go. In, in essence, in the last uh, two months itself, we've actually uh, funded over uh, 40 different projects um, out of about uh, 55 to 60 different applications. It's a, it means about 75% completion rate. And it's worth noting that over 10 of these submissions 
uh, really improve Algorand's core code or our SDKs. So it's great to see like multiple developers, you know, go into the code, improve it with the other ecosystem developers. And we've got a couple of high value bounties as well, about, about up to 4,000 algo tokens, you know, for successful uh, decentralized application projects. And, uh, mm-hmm. and we've, we've got some really interesting uh, data as well. A lot of uh, US-based, EU and Asia-based submissions, just to name a few countries uh, that have participated in our Trailblazer bounty program. You've got Singapore, nice. Switzerland, Spain, uh, Kazakhstan, the Czech Republic, Croatia. So there's a lot of different uh, developers. Um, so we are we're looking forward to have uh, more representation, specifically from like nice. Africa, the South American continent, and also yes. really um, have more sort of bounties that would um, help with the growth of uh, the development of the Algorand ecosystem. Absolutely. So one more follow-up question with that within yeah. the next 12 months what other actions and plans do you have uh or the algorand foundation have on supporting more specifically when it comes to educating and um education for the youth or students yeah great jesse i, I know that's an area that you're quite passionate about you know in, in young people Absolutely. And yes. and so is the Algorand Foundation as well. Uh, we we partner with a lot of student clubs. Uh, one of them is is Amazing. the Encode Cup. You know, arguably one of the largest student network in um, the blockchain world. Uh, also with uh-huh. the Blockchain Acceleration Foundation. And uh, within the next twelve months, we are looking at launching what you call the ACE program or the Algorand Center of Excellence. And that is a, a large program that partners with universities to support with research funding. With supporting uh, undergraduates, academics in really uh, working on the algorithm right. ecosystem, and and we provide funding for that as well. So so there's going to be a lot of activity to support that. In fact, we just hired one full time program manager just working on this particular ACE program itself. So you're going to see a lot of right. activity, a lot of outcomes being generated in working with the young people uh, of our generation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because it's super important, right? And uh, so. I know that um, the beginning of the July, Algorand Foundation supports international blockchain hackathon at Monash University in Melbourne, Australia. Was this endeavor part of um, this um, endeavor you just mentioned as well, or was that something a little bit different? Uh, that's simple, similar as well. So yeah, we, we are working yes. with uh, different universities uh, on on like a different on a case yes. by case basis. So we have like Monash University in Australia is is a close partner right. of ours. Yes. And, and so I, I know yes. uh, Dr. Joseph Liu there and the team at the Monash Blockchain Technology Center. Um, and, and yeah, right. we just launched a hackathon, which is very good. We had about 60 plus submissions, uh, 60 plus wow. uh, uh, entries uh, in, in the whole uh, digital hackathon. And and now we're actually going to be selecting the winners and announcing that. And we do hackathon ah. and, and developer events across the world itself. So so that's still ongoing, actually, in fact. But just that next year, we're going to have a bigger push okay. to it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Also, I saw when I was doing the research, I saw some memes that um, mm. <laughs> y'all made during a hackathon, and they're pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So, okay. And, and, yeah, and, yeah. And memes are important. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You've got some the cool uh, Algorand memes coming along too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, could you share one particular highlight from you being uh, the judge of the hackathon? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing I, I liked was that there was a lot of buy-in and commitment. Uh, from the participants, there's there's some good diversity. Some of them are very smart in uh, what they do and and had some really right. good submissions. And it's also good to see the commitment from not just the participants but the professors, research researchers, our ambassadors, community champions, and our team itself. Like all really uh, understanding this. And and I must admit, I'm I'm not I'm not a real big techie. Um, uh, I I am more of like the the management and the advocacy side of blockchain, but I've learned a Absolutely. lot on uh, developing on Algorand as well. So, so this is Absolutely. quite exciting. Yeah, that, that was yeah, a good yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. Just judging yeah. everything, looking at every different project. Mm. Right. Because I think this is also one thing that's extremely important in blockchain space and in any tech space in general, right? Not only the tech knowledge part needs to be there and the vision needs to be there, but also that part must be closely working with the business aspect, right? Because there the logistic needs to be there. Uh the mass adoption needs to be there. The user needs to be actually love it, actually solve the problem in their life versus just thinking yeah. about this idea that, oh, we think it's a great vision, it's gonna work. But at the end mm. of the day, like people still need to use it, right? There's so I think the important 
genuine feedback from the business side is extremely, extremely important um, in the blockchain space. Completely so. agree with you. Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's like baking a cake, right? So my wife likes to yes. bake and I enjoy uh, <laughs> her, uh, her baking. And, and one part of it is nice. like, there's a lot of ingredients to produce the cake, right? And right, in a layered absolutely. cake, thinking of the algorithm itself, it's a layer one protocol. And then it's uh-huh. not just the protocol itself. You've got to think about, you know, the other layers itself, you know, the application layer, the uh, specific real world use cases, uh, the, the digital asset or the cryptocurrency aspect of it as well. So there are many layers to it and, and it all comes together. And so we need to think about all different facets of it. And that's why I really like um, having a really diverse and super intelligent people part of the foundation that helps us with the decision making. All of us come with our different skill sets and we essentially uh, think about all the different factors in terms of growing the ecosystem all together. Absolutely. So you just mentioned your wife and this question what I'm about to ask is actually one of uh, my favorite questions and the guests have been always enjoy answering this question right so what role does love and affection play in your life <laughs> no great question yep and, and since you brought up my wife yes uh, she is uh, uh, love and affection is definitely uh, present there as well and I feel that, right. that love and affection uh, definitely needs to be uh, obviously, it's not a. It doesn't seem like a very corporate and professional word, but I glad I'm glad you bring it up because uh, it's a term that we need to practice not just in our personal life but in our our professional life as well. And and I think right. if you think about love uh, and affection from a a professional setting, it actually means to have like a real uh, joy and a real excitement or longing towards something, right? And yes. and I think if we all have that same attitude towards work, uh, we can actually see a lot of um, growth in the things that we aim to do and to actually enjoy that process as well. So I think that love and affection plays a lot in the way we work and the way we live as well. 100%. I've yeah. got two daughters as well. So I, I don't oh just my have... Oh uh, 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 Yeah, that's right. Since we met in 2018, I was, you know, just married and then now I've got two two young girls. So I, yeah. I have to think not just as a, a husband but a father but as an employee but as a leader and I think that love and affection can play across all different roles that you wear in terms of the hats that you wear absolutely so do you feel that huge psychological shift when you change identity from you know the husband into a father or when you when you uh you know just two lovely daughter that came to your life yeah that's right i, I don't think it's a, a psychological shift i feel like it's like a psychological addition so remember we talk about the layers so you, you don't yes. change your, you don't shift from a husband to a father and actually that's right. quite dangerous as well because you're always a husband and you're always going to be a father and then you yeah, add yeah, more yeah, roles as right. you grow yeah older, yeah, right? yeah 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 that's <laughs> so, yeah, more so, precise. so i think that that um that definitely i think it's an additional thing to think about mm. like mm. when i was uh, single i wouldn't think twice about skydiving and bungee jumping and scuba diving you know uh, oh, and all the crazy activities like in the past <laughs> that i did or uh, hiking a dormant volcano right but now when i'm married oh, and kids, you know, i gotta like oh i gotta think a bit more before i do something like that and yeah and so um that's where that psychological uh thought process come in as well yeah amazing and Personally, I'm super interested in this question as well. Um, so you are extremely busy as the COO of the Algorand Foundation. And then you also have two daughters and you have family commitment. So how do you balance all that? Do you have mm. a secret? Do you have a trick? Do you have a um, certain kind of routine? Yeah, definitely. I've got, I've got lots of, uh, I think routine is, is it. And, I think I'll go back to the very first question that you asked me, right? How do you define yes. success? And I would say that it's a life of intention. So you've got mm. to be really intentional in what you say yes to and also what you say no to. And so that with that intention, then you will know what does success mean to you. So if, if I feel that success to me means saying yes to, you know, all the what, 10, 100, 1,000 things in life, then I might backtracking to when I was younger when I wanted to try 1,000 things once, right? If I already know what I want, I should just do that 10 things 100 times or that one thing 1,000 times, right? And that's really the path to mastery. So the way I manage all this is to be clear 
that anything I do, is it aligned to uh, what I define as success or what El Grand Foundation defines as success? And if it's not aligned, then I would just politely say no and say, sorry, I'm fully committed and, and I can't um, support you, but I can maybe support you in other ways. So for example, if someone is asking me for a, a call to meet or a coffee and I know it's going to take half an hour to an hour of my time, but I know that it is not aligned to uh, the, the intention that I want to have. I just said, sorry, I'm, I'm fully committed, but maybe can I help you if you can talk over email instead and, or over text? And then that may save me some time and I may just spend a couple minutes. But then it also makes sure that I can be fully committed to those that I want to set my intention to. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to talk to you over an interview, uh, Jazzy, I want to be fully committed to talking to you and not be thinking about other things. And so then I would say no to other things so that I can be fully committed to what I've committed to. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, right? And I think meditation and yoga, these kind of practices or even journaling help so much about the power of being present, the power of being the now and being committed with um, mm. who and what is in front of you. And this quote heard it from somewhere. It says, the person that is most important to you in front uh in the whole world is always a person who is in front of your eyes right now Mm. so um that's good there's something very interesting there um yeah and i'm glad i'm i'm in front of your eyes right now (laughs) and so are you for me yeah definitely closer attention now (laughs) yes definitely definitely so um diving into more of you mentioned doing 10,000 things once versus doing one thing 10,000 times or 10,000 hours, right? Out of all the things you have done, the things that you have tried, could you be able to narrow it down to one thing that you realize that you've been doing this one thing for 10,000 hours? Well, wow, that's, a, that's a, definitely a question that would get me thinking. I think that right. if there's one thing that I would like to really hone and, and build that 10,000 hours, it's in that area of uh, communicating and connecting. So like what I'm doing right. right now is I'm connecting and communicating with you. And I want to Nasty. be able to communicate and uh, communicate the algorithm ecosystem and connect strategic partners together that can really uh, change the world for good, right? And, and I'm a very big believer in, in social impact the ESG environment, social governance side of things, and also to be able to curate and connect and develop strategic partnerships between uh, different groups to really uh, multiply and exponential, so create exponential growth in the areas that we partner on. So so if I would I was like to really sum it up, it's communicating and connecting, and then the outcome would then lead to like strategic partnerships. And that's part right. of what I did with, you know, my roles in the past as well. And I want to continue to do that right. as well. Right. Wow. We definitely got to do at least a few more episodes, right? Because I think my heart tells me that strategic, putting together strategic partnership is extremely important for the business. And that is something that I more and more so finding my bliss with that, mm. right? Because... Mm. When I'm asking you the question, I'm also thinking about my uh, asking myself, what are something that I have been doing for the last five or 10 years, regardless yeah. of where I was, what role I was playing, what industry I was in, right? Because mm-hmm. even when I was doing the event before and now still doing it and now doing a podcast, it is still at the end of the day, I'm still connecting with people. I'm building this connection with other people and building this bond right because i generally believe that even the blockchain space even the artificial intelligence even when it comes to nanotech or biotech at the end of the day there's no human there's no business being done period it just period Mm. so the importance of communication right and understanding each other and uh finding the um the synergy between uh, one organization and another and collaboration right are extremely extremely important i think yeah and it takes practice right it's not just talking it's sometimes listening as well it's also you know the taking notes and and making sure you remember things and also following up so it's a whole yes. like 
whole bunch of things all together that will then lead you yes. to communicate well, to connect well, and then that leads to strategic partnerships. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, let's shift the vibe a little bit. This is super interesting. Uh, Jason, I heard it from the grapevine that Algorand is part of Amazon's secret project. Do you have a comment on that? That's the number one question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess uh, there are many things down the grapevine, um, as you may know. Um, I, I feel that um, that one part is is something that, that came out of a, a news uh, recently and it, I think it got blown up on social media. Um, obviously, nothing's official yet. There's nothing been released out of um, Algorand or Algorand Foundation. But what I can say is that we are committed to building long-term uh, value and to work with the most innovative uh, companies and to build an, a sustainable public blockchain as the Algorand protocol. So that part of it is to build an, a vibrant uh, Algorand ecosystem and to be honest, don't want to be distracted by short-term rumors and to comment, but we want to play a long game. I mean, we're still really early and we want to keep our eyes out to work with the best strategic partners. So as far as like the Amazon thing, there's nothing been announced yet. So I, I think it's just a, a rumor for now, you know? And right. also keep right. it as it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Cool, 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 cool. So, <laughs> so it is a rumor, but also at the same time that the um, like you mentioned, Algorand Foundation is extremely committed to build long term and sustainable partnership with the best companies in the world, right? Because um, that is um, extremely impactful, right? Because you know, com- yes. it's like building one partnership. You we could either go with the smaller ones, or we could potentially go directly with the giant. You know, and Algorand yeah. uh, Foundation definitely has that ability. And has that mm. Um, mm. reputation as well, right? So that mm. that make perfect sense. That make perfect yeah. sense. That that's what we do. We want to work with the the best, uh, most strategic partners that we can find out there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, who knows? Maybe Amazon. Maybe someone from Amazon is listening to this podcast right now, and then they're gonna sh- uh, shoot you an email. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm happy to always ready. <laughs> Yeah, opening for uh, the synchronicity, right? And that's for me personally, I'm um, more and more so aware of my time, but also at the same time, this is also something me learned uh, from my time experience here in Spain as well. As I'm extremely valuable my time, but also at the same time, I will also dedicate time for adventures to mm. create opportunity for chaos for synchronicity to happen for yeah. amazing opportunity to like fall down my lap if you will yeah and yeah. i think that's very interesting um so jason tell us what is your favorite drink uh favorite cocktail or you know could be beer or wine <laughs> oh really okay okay yes. uh, favorite drink yeah I I am actually you know surprisingly for for someone that is like in the innovation and sort of uh, what I actually like to just go for an an, an old fashioned cocktail, uh-huh. so like a, a bourbon simple one. I I think it's good to just go back to the basics. Uh, but yeah. over here in, in Melbourne, Australia, I, I like my coffee, so I always go for a flat yeah. white. Um, and and uh, enjoy those coffees whenever I start my day as well. Yeah. Yes, amazing. And uh, how many coffees you drink throughout the day? Just curious. <laughs> yeah, I I can I know I I I try not to drink too much. Just just one or two right. cups a day. Uh, but okay. but okay. now I'm actually trying to actually in fact stay away from coffee and actually enjoy coffee as like something that I I drink on occasions. So I've been moving just to tea and simple. I don't want to get too addicted to caffeine. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's super so that's something that yeah, I saw. I, wanna just I saw your uh, drinking. I saw your uh, drinking tea. Um, throughout the podcast. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right, that's right. I it's good. Keep hydrated. That's important. Extremely important. Um mm-hmm. so the reason I asked what is your favorite drink is that because um me and my company were hosting a few crypto related happy hour uh, mm. starting the upcoming month. And there's gonna be one in Madrid, there's gonna be one in Austin, Texas, and we hope so much that we can do one in Melbourne, Australia, and potentially of with course. uh all ground Algorand Foundation too, right? So that's why I asked, yeah, me, like, yeah. Jason, tell us your favorite drink because we got to make sure that those old-fashioned, you know, those bourbon, nice, delicious cocktail that is not too sweet, 
that's a perfect balance that we need to make sure that all those kind of drinks gonna be there um uh, for nice. happy hour when you arrive nice so. no, i look forward to it i think that'll be great more than welcome to come over and uh, and looking forward if, if if the opportunity comes i'd like to be there in austin texas you know or in wherever in the world that you'll be hosting a uh, happy hour as well yeah yes absolutely because um the person also being here in europe as well i realize mm. obviously the whole crypto or the blockchain environment here in spain is not as popping in general compared to california or compared to uh australia but still there's on the other hand maybe when a community is smaller that the bond between people mm. is just more closed and more also it's based on punk culture right like i mentioned before when we are chatting um mm -hmm. i went to um a community event by Crypto Plaza, our dear friend, and I met with one of the advisor, and he his name is Jimmy. And Mr. Jimmy is so kind; he was telling me mm. that Jazzy, take my number, and we're gonna go on a beautiful hike together near my house. And I was thinking, mm. oh my goodness, like how does he know that I love hiking? That's number one, right? And mm. so with that said, yes, the European community here is definitely super robust and people really, really support each other, right? So that's in return we want to, and my company and myself want to, you know, similar to yeah. you, right? Shouting out to those people, showing love to those people, you know, championing those people with their endeavors as well, so. Yeah, great. And it's really good that you're championing this, you know, out of Madrid. And yeah, hopefully one yes. day we can meet together and, and, and like just meet your, your crypto community there or those who are really interested in the blockchain space too. Yes, absolutely. And I can close my eyes and I can see it. I can see the vision, you know, me and you and a bunch of other people in Madrid and in Austin, you know, with a drink, beautiful environment, nice music, you know, nice tapas, the Spanish food yeah. and uh, and everybody having a great time and beauty in their Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it as well. And yeah, we yes. can, I'm sure we can, we can uh, find time uh, after all this uh, uh, oh my lockdown God. is over. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so with that said, I know you got to run soon and... A few follow up and wrapping up question, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. knowing what you know now, Jason, is there anything you would have done differently when you were first starting out? Ooh, that's a that's a good one. Um, I definitely would try to practice more intention uh, when I was younger. I think when I was younger, I was just following what everyone else was doing, and and I think some parts of it were good because uh, I had good role models. Uh, but some parts of it, like, I slightly regret it. So I would be more intentional, like, in the career that I wanted, in the lifestyle that I want to have, and in the area that I want to sort of move myself towards. So I think having right intention when you're younger is, is very important. Uh, obviously, I, I don't feel that I regret where I am right now. I'm really thankful. I'm, I'm really grateful that, that I get to do all of this and, and really, uh, like, sort of get excited to wake up every day. Uh, but if there's one thing I would do differently, is I would practice uh, being more intentional in my younger days yeah yeah so follow up with that is there one or two things the listener could implement into their life or their day-to-day -day routine right now that they can practice to be more intentional yeah that's a very good question i think one one thing that you want to do is that every time you're doing something i want you to just stop yourself and say that is this what I want to do? Like when you're in a meeting with someone or when you're eating something, is this what I want to eat? Or has someone just put something in front of me, right? And and say that, hey, if this is something that you don't want to do when you're doing something that that is not intentional, then don't do it, right? Uh, but a caveat to that, sometimes, you know, like sometimes I, I, I wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym. It's like, oh, is, is waking up at 5 a.m something I want to do. Sometimes I say, oh, no, I just want to sleep in, right? But I know it's in the discipline of waking up early, going to the gym, starting the day strong would lead me to a life of success. So then you say, oh, right. I don't feel like going to bed, but yes, I want to be intentional about waking up early oh because uh, this is something that I want to stay disciplined in doing. So that's an yeah. example of, of like catching yourself whenever mm -hmm. that you, you are you're in an activity. So is this something that I want to do? Maybe Jazzy may think, oh, is this someone that I wanted to interview in my podcast while you're halfway interviewing them, right? Or in, any activity that you're doing, right? And then the second one is that when you get a moment to start planning out your future and say that, hey, because some things need, need, need um, planning, right? 
So, so right. you, you would say that, hey, if I want to, let's say, make a trip across halfway around the world, is this something I want to do? And if I'm making a trip halfway across the world, what are the activities that I want to do? Because I'm going to invest a lot of time and energy and effort to be a, around halfway around the world and find out, is this something that I want to do? And imagine if you can lead a life of intention with every single aspect in your life, whether in, you're in the crypto blockchain space or whether you become a father, mother, having uh, children and everything like practice being intentional in life don't just like you know oh i'll decide when i cross the bridge or uh, uh it is what it is and i'll just you know uh, let it be and then figure it out along the way you know that that there's a time and space for that but you cannot let that be your entire life altogether just practice being intentional yes one quote i believe one of the saints have said is Wrong is wrong even when everyone is doing it, and right is right even when no one is doing it. So, being intentional about mm. the actions that mm. we're taking, and this is especially talking towards the younger and the future generation, that mm. even when the almost the rest of the world seems like they're doing something, but that does not mean that you should or you have to do it. And if your heart or you just know that something is just wrong, then just don't freaking do it, <laughs> mm. right? Mm. So something there. Um, yeah, that's right. And I think that relates to being intentional as well, whether you know what is wrong absolutely. or what is right, but you need to be very clear and intentional yes. about it. Yeah. And I think this is something I wish I have knew were putting more uh, thoughts into this, which is setting boundaries, mm. right? Super yeah. important. Um, so, Jason, would you tell us what was the last book you read that absolutely blew your mind or you found it super, super interesting? So it could be the book or Arthur and maybe you could tell us why. Oh, wow. That's, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Uh, if there was a book that, that sort of um, blew my mind, there's been quite a few books as well. And, and I guess it depends on like, the, the who is reading it and, and what's happening but if it relates to um, an area that like about being intentional I think uh, the book Atomic Habits by James Clear that has really helped me in shaping uh, me having a life of intention so Atomic Habits talk about how we can develop the core habits in our lives and, uh, and James talks about you know habit stacking and building a habit contract as well so when you can start to develop right. like certain uh, disciplines and intentions and actually embed it into your routines, you then sort of lead a life of success because then everything that you do is having full intention for it. So Atomic Habits from James Clear would be the book that I would recommend that, that had really gotten me thinking about it. Yeah, mm, Absolutely. Because when I tell this to my friends, it sounded like counter intuitive at the beginning which is i told them that the more structure or more specifically you scheduled your day actually the more freedom you'll have so that you don't spend the time thinking about should i do this should i do that and but on the other hand when you have such a routine that you know that at this time is this time i'm taking a meeting this time i'm lunching this time i'm yeah. going to the gym this time I'm meditating just don't even think about that so that your brain power can making decisions are way more important things, right? So, yeah. With that said, yeah, in fact, Jason, please. Yeah. So I wanted to say, uh, there's a book by Jocko Willink called "Discipline Is Freedom," and I say the more ah, disciplined yeah. you are, the more freedom you have. It's like an ex Navy SEAL, and, and that's a good book that I recommend as well. So that's exactly what you said. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And did he used to have um also actually connect with the next question about ask um about your routine daily? I think. Didn't Jocko used to have this challenge of like people for people to get up at four AM or something? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he did that on Twitter. Morning. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right, that's right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so Jason, do you actually get up at five o'clock to go to the gym and tell us your uh, your routine like during yeah, the day? Yeah, I, I try to. So I, I've got uh, two other gym buddies. So we we are at the gym at five AM. So four thirty AM we get up with the gym, we hit the gym, and then uh, we we spend some time talking about um, what stretches our mind as well. Um, and and then we start the day, right? 
and and we do a wow. few things in between too. Uh, but I I do that. We do that three times a week, and and so we try to form a habit because sometimes I've got late night calls as well. And then now with the lockdown, so Melbourne's in the sixth lockdown here uh, as the time oh. of recording. So so we don't get to do that. Uh, but but I do want to get into the habit of of sleeping early and waking up early as well, and that's part of the whole process of you know having a good disciplined right. life. Mm. Right and. At five a.m., you all meet at the gym, so it's not like you get up by five o'clock. But when you all you doing that three times a week, you actually meet at the gym sharp at five o'clock, or more yeah, or less. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's crazy. Track. So, so we get yeah, up at five thirty, and then, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, fair enough. Um, that's incredible. I used to do that too around the lockdown time. I would get up at five. Meditate, do yoga, and when six a.m., that when we can leave the house, I will be running, leaving the door six a.m. sharp with a backpack with a basketball inside, and I will run to the basketball court and will shoot around、uh, basketball. Uh, do do like literally did a Steph Curry shooting drill and see the sunrise、nice. uh, over、wow. the city.、That's、so good, man, wow, really good at you for doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah.、Ooh. Thanks, and definitely, I waking up morning. Uh, super early. It just also it's a psychological thing that feel like you are winning when it's super quiet in the morning and you get to enjoy the city from a total different aspect yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, and you're feeling、mm. that you're like out hunting earlier, right? So that's super beautiful.、Yeah. And um, wait, Melbourne still have lockdown right now? Yeah, that's right.、Uh, we just went on a、What? seven day lockdown until next Thursday. Yeah, but we're super strict. Like this lockdown came out of like just thirty cases. So we we have、wow. like consistently less than uh, uh, the d- double digit cases. So we're we're、yeah. really in a tight、uh, sort of lockdown now. Yeah, but we're good. Yeah. We'll get over it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like on that note, it's like Madrid is totally. You know, this is Mediterranean. It's totally the other, the other,、uh, the other end of the、um, aspect. But on the other similar aspect, right? Beijing.、Uh, I just talked to my family. Yes,、mm. so there is、uh, next month in September. There's a huge international conference、uh, in Beijing, and literally、mm-hmm. the intention from from high up is essentially saying that no matter what happens before September in Beijing, needs to be zero cases. And、mm. it's just super, super strict. On the other hand, and some other country, they are just like, hey, cool, you know, gotta they gotta live their life, you know, la vida loca and. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's different. It's, it's different.、Um, but so I know we gotta run soon.、Uh, let's finishing up with this one very interesting question. So, Jason, what do you think is the one thing that made you the person you are today? Oh, what what is the one thing that made me who I am today?、Um, I think that that. So getting a bit more on the spiritual side, right? I think that I believe in a、Love、higher、that. power, like like I believe that that there's someone out there greater than me, and and I can rely on on that person, and and I could or or, or for me is God, right? So I'm I'm a Christian, so I believe that 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 if there's anything that you would be able to rely on God to support you, and to make you who you are, and and sometimes you get surrender Peter's moments, you know, miracles happen and. Opportunities that you never expect all come along the way, and so I have to credit it to you know having God by my side, right? And and to be able to for Him to send me to people and opportunities that would have not been imagined, and I believe that everyone would you know benefit from having a higher belief or power that that is on you. Yeah, that's amazing. So for me, what you just said means, um. It means to me that you are having such a strong faith, and I heard this very interesting definition about faith. It says, "Faith is being loyal to the unseen reality." And so, follow up question with that is that so, Jason? Actually, I was baptized when I was a kid in Beijing as well because my、okay. mom's uh, uh, she's Christian. Do you? Or have you been always going to the church ever since you were a kid, or you grew up in this,、um, you know, this spiritual and、uh, religious environment, or where you know, where later on in life you start practicing more so with all the prayers and things like that? 
Just yeah, I, I grew up I grew up in faith as a kid. So so my, my family was very yeah. involved in, in the church setting. Uh, uh, but I had the journey of finding my own faith as well, you know, rather than just living my parents' faith. Remember I told you that a life without intention, you know, you just follow what other people are doing. But I, I started to realize that when I was more intentional in seeking and finding and asking and knocking. And that was when I truly found a lot of confidence in my faith altogether. And and that's mm-hmm. when I strongly believe in that. Yeah, and and great that you had that early experience as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, um, because it is indeed that something so simple from the Bible, such as seek, you shall find, mm. and uh, no, knock, it shall be open, and ask, it shall be given to you. And it just, it just true, it's like, it's just law, right? It's like this book of text that people have been doing such things a thousand years ago, and many, many amazing character that and with good virtuals that we can learn nowadays and maybe sometimes nowadays that people forgot so Mm. because those things are extremely important to keep in mind not only in the present but also when we are building and creating the future because i mean virtual is the foundation of our actions right so Mm. uh extremely important yes yes yeah with that said Everybody have faith and follow Jason on Twitter, on LinkedIn. And also you can subscribe and check out the Algorand Foundation, everything of all the amazing endeavor that they're doing. Please, everybody check it out. I'm going to drop all the link of where you can find Jason's work and uh, the Algorand Foundation, their updates, their Twitter, their community um, endeavors as well. Please support and show some love. We need everybody together so that we can together build a brighter future because the future shall include everybody. So, yes. Agreed. Amen to that. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. I Amen. It. It All right, Jason. You. Thank you so much. And uh, talk to you soon. Let's do another episode or the whole series very, very soon because it's just, for me, just, yep. I'm just getting started with the questions. Yeah, man. Keep it up. Yes. Thank you so much. Much love. All right, then. See you then. Bye. And action.